Okay, well what we have here is an HP 5302A. It's uh, part of a modular uh, 5300 set. The top half of the unit is the display. That's the 5300 part. And then the bottom part is the 5302. That's the, uh, uh, the 50 megahertz universal counter. Um, this counter will read from 10 hertz to 50 megahertz by spec and as we're going to see it'll read up to 70 megahertz uh, in a pinch and uh, it'll read uh, 10 up to 10 megahertz on the B input and it will allow you to do a ratio of A to B you can read periods uh, from a tenth of a microsecond to a millisecond uh, uh, in, in duration uh, on the time base and oh the sensitivity uh, is adjustable on both channels um, we have the sample rate that's adjustable um, what we're going to do we're going to put it through its paces and just show you that this unit is a very nice looking unit the cabinet is beautiful I actually bought this unit because I wanted the cabinet for a project I was working on. The unit wasn't supposed to be working, um, so I paid a little, down, a little bit of money for it and, uh, and bought it basically for the cabinet. And uh, once I opened it up and was starting to gut it, I discovered what was wrong with the unit and I fixed that. And by golly, I got the sucker working, so, or, excuse me, I didn't have the heart to scrap it, so I decided to sell it. So it will be going up on eBay. It's a, it's working beautifully. It's a, a, a very nice unit. Let me discuss something about the uh, LEDs on this unit. They are strobed um, thousands of times a second. And as a result, uh, to the naked eye, it looks plenty bright. I don't have a problem seeing this in this room at all. It's very nice. But I do notice that through the camera it's dimmed and that's because the camera doesn't capture all of the light um, as well as my eye does. And the strobe uh, on the circuit is causing it to look dimmer than it would otherwise. So you're just going to have to trust me, uh, at least I hope you will, that this unit is actually very adequate with brightness in a room here. Um, didn't want you to think that there was something wrong with it because there really isn't. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, operate it from this PTS 500. I'm going to choose the frequencies I want. I can I can dial them down to whatever I want, and I'm going to turn off the light here so that we can get uh, a little bit better look at the display. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do. Let's see, we're going to go to A, and right now we're going to, uh, we are running in right now with 1 megahertz, and as you can see, we are reading 1 megahertz. That's not a problem, actually, with this... Uh, I can turn the sensitivity down. We don't need that much. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and step it up. We'll go to two, three. All right. So you get the idea there. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do thirteen, twenty-three, thirty-three. 43, 44, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Fifty. 
57, 8, 9, there's 60, 70, 71, 72, and that's where we break down. So we're good about 72. Now I did have to turn up the gain, the sensitivity, but no problem reading that. And below 50, of course, no problem there because that's what she's made for. Okay, what I've done is I've fed the oscillator output to channel B of my scope, and I've fed a 10 megahertz rubidium signal into channel A, and we are looking at the display, the sine wave on channel A and the square wave on channel B. And as you can see, I've adjusted the oscillator on uh, on the 5302 to match the uh, 10 megahertz sine wave very, very accurately so that it's better than a, a tenth of a, uh, a hertz right now. Now, I don't know that it's going to hold that that well, but at least for now, you're going to know that this unit's been calibrated, and we're going to go ahead and just take a reading on it. Let's take the... Uh, Oscillator ourselves back into position here. And go ahead and feed our 10 megahertz signal in to channel A and then rubidium. All right. And we are on. Uh, all right, there we're reading 10 megahertz to four decimal places. Let's take her down. A, let's give it five decimal places. Now the one has moved off to the left, but we are reading five decimal places, so that's down to ten, to within ten hertz. Okay, here's six decimal places, so now this is a ten second period, so we're going to have to wait a moment here for this thing to uh, Count the number of pulses in 10 seconds, and at the moment, as we can see, in 10 seconds, we're within 0 0.001. So we are 0 0.001 kilohertz. So we were the, we are within one hertz. And we'll give it a second count here. There we are. We are within 0 0.001 kilohertz, so that's within one hertz right now on our calibration. So the unit has been calibrated accurately. Um, I am certain it will drift, but it won't drift a lot. Even cold, it was within five hertz, and that was uncalibrated. So we should do quite well. We'll check it again a little later. Let's go ahead and see what else this unit will do. Okay, here we are reading a 500 kilohertz signal coming in on channel A. We see it displaying the 500 kilohertz. We could uh, pick up on, we have to wait 10 seconds at this point, but we'll pick up on uh, resolution. So here we see 500 kilohertz, channel A. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this to B. And put the function on B. And um, all right, we have 500 kilohertz on B. Let's read the uh, period of B. period is reading 2.0 microseconds, which 
would be right at 500 kilohertz. Because 1 megahertz would be 1 microsecond. 2 microseconds must be half of that, which is 500, mega, 500 kilohertz. So that's working. And then we have the... Uh, Average period of B, 2 microseconds. And then we have the ratio of B over A times N. So all right, we've fed a 1 megahertz signal in on A, we have a 10 megahertz signal in on B. So that's 10 over 1, or 10, and then it's multiplied times N, and N is 10 right now, so we should be displaying 100. So we see a display of 100, we see that where N is 10, so divide 100 by 10, we get 10, which must be the ratio of channel B to A, which it is. It's 10 megahertz over 1 megahertz, so it's 10. So that's working. If I was to change it to 2 megahertz, then we go to 50. And that would be right, too. So that's working as well. So everything about this unit is working just fine. Beautiful little unit. Well, I have provided on um, CD, uh, I've got four, well, actually three manuals. Two of them belong to the 5300A, which is the display portion. One is the operation and uh, uh, in service manual, and the other is a military um, calibration PDF, and then I've got an HP 5302 uh, operation and service manual and a copy of an HP journal from 71 where the 5300 and 5302 were, were uh, predominant in the article. It's interesting reading. So uh, I provide it on CD because the the manual is quite thick um, and would be heavy to try and, and ship the whereas the, um, the meter would not be too bad by itself. Uh, we could, if you do want a printed copy instead of, uh, of the CD, we could arrange for that, but I would have to charge you for the additional um, postage. I won't charge you for creating the manual. I'll give it to you, but uh, you'd, you'll have to agree in, at the time that we close on the, uh, the sale. Just let me know. But the uh, chances are quite good that uh, you're not going to need the service manual anyway, so having it on CD which should be enough. Uh, along with that, along with that, I will provide a new set of BNC to Gator Clip leads, uh, which will give you something very usable uh, in a um, universal sort of way for uh, measuring frequencies off of different pieces of equipment and points in the circuit and so on. So there you have it, uh, a very nice meter, very nice looking, functioning extremely well, piece of history, classic, uh, nice set of service manuals and documents, and a nice set of leads. Happy bidding. Thanks for listening.